So, you might be wondering, what the heck is this thing? Can you play OC with it? It has a stylus and even two keys here. No, unfortunately you can't. This is a completely mechanical machine. And these keys are pretty heavy, springy, and slow. So what is it? This is a 1925 AEG Mignon 4 index typewriter. So again, you would have known on my channel that I largely feature keyboards and mainly typewriters. So like those over there. Now AEG um, was a company that for a time produced the Mignon typewriter, which dates back to 1901, and later became the Olympia typewriter company, which produced those two typewriters over there, the Olympia SM4 and that Arabic, yes, Arabic, uh, Olympia SM9, which I'll feature in a future video. So, basically, on most of your typewriters, you will find that you have a whole array of keys, right? This is your predecessor to the modern computer keyboard. And pretty much for every key, you will impress one character into a piece of paper. Um, now, the idea for an index typewriter is that in order to save costs and produce such a printing instrument for, I guess, writing nice documents or letters for that can be afforded by households or those who can't afford the more expensive machines. They produce the index typewriter, which is effectively a simplification where at the expense of speed, you get simplicity and cost efficacy, where you're forced to select your characters one by one with this stylus. So yeah, this isn't a key. You only have these keys, in this case, the backspace your actual key press thing. So you can imagine that you have one key, one letter key, one space bar, and you use this stylus to tell the machine what character to print with a single key. So basically this is your, yeah, imagine the literal single key that can type any character you want. Um, well, any character that's available on this index or on this cylinder. So, given that, pretty much what you have is you move this and it moves the cylinder back and forth. In this case, I have a, I had the pleasure of purchasing a machine with a script typeface. Um, and as you can see, this is a really weird layout, but once you get used to it, it's actually possible to type reasonably fast using it. And a lot of words can be typed fairly quickly, like determine. Um, so now for demonstration purposes, let's feed some paper. Now, function-wise, this typewriter has the paper release right over here, put it down. Again, the paper release basically controls whether or not the feed rollers, which are essential for allowing the paper to be held and rolled through the platen. Um, pretty much when you're done working, you want to release the paper and pull it out. And then we have this lever, which you push down in order to release the line spacing ratchet. This is your paper bale, which helps hold the paper down. Then you can just roll this down like this. And if you want to adjust the paper, you can engage the paper release like so. So like if you were feeding and went in crooked, you will be able to straighten the paper out while typing. So that's in. 
This should be good enough for the top margin. And now we're in here. This is your carriage release. And you can do the same with a space bar. Um, you have the same effect on this Blickensturfer. Carriage release, or you hold down the space bar. It's a different story on the Bennett typewriter. Where you can just slide it as you wish. Um, I'll tell you what's special about these machines later. So, now if you want to actually type something, again, assuming that you've already set your margins, so pretty much you just pull these up. So your left margin is where the text will stop on the left. Right margin will limit you from writing too far on the right if you want to keep a nice and clean page. So, yep, that will go left and right. Let's keep it there. And now if you want to type something, like... So, you grab onto the stylus right over here. And then, let's say we want to do... Hello. Yes, we do have an exclamation mark. As you can see here, it's been typed, printed quite nicely in this beautiful script typeface. Now, let's talk about how this machine actually works. So, first of all, to do that, we'll have to quickly unscrew this guy here. It's always good when you're working with antique machines to have a proper set of flathead bits of every single possible size, lest you strip the screw head. So that just comes off easily, looks like that, and we can see this mechanism. So it's pretty much levers that suspend this assembly. So, there will be grooves under here, which interact with a pinion, which rotates this cylinder back and forth. Then, you'll see here, that when you're typing, of course you want to make sure that if you are off-center or not perfectly aligned, it will automatically slot into the correct position. Same thing happens over here with this large gear, which interacts with that little bar over there. And that bar also doubles as a central support for your ribbon mechanism. So if you want to reverse ribbon now, I was missing this spring on the other side and actually replaced. So this is just a DIN, a European DIN spool. I got this one, or rather a universal spool off of my Triumph Perfect over there, yes, on the floor. And basically, that spring will hold this to engage with that little pin over there. Now, unfortunately, these universal spools have a little depression there, which will prevent that little stopper from doing its job. So I had to put a washer here. And otherwise, if you wanted to um, reverse the ribbon, you just push it that rod, this shaft, this way. And if there, this were a proper ribbon, then it would start and you'd have a spring pushing the ribbon into that pin. So then in terms of how the actual ribbon engagement works, 
the stream is always turning this direction, so depending on which side, it will either pull from this side or that side. You have a little click over here, and then as you type, you will see that there is a little leaf spring that advances that large ratchet wheel. Little by little. So that's that. Now, as for the actual escapement, so the escapement in any typewriter is what is responsible for moving the carriage along and allowing you to space your characters evenly. So, first, let's put a little something soft to. Dampen that. I put this machine on its back. So that's the underside. So you can see that we have this mechanism that will pull down probably. So that's for the space bar while well, this lever will cause the the rotating head to descend upon the paper and then your space bar will just interact with the escapement which moves the carriage little by little. You can kind of see it doing its thing, at least with that little tooth over there, which at least acts as a lock for the carriage position. And I guess a spring here, yes, this acts as your touch control. Mm, I think I guess I could set it to the lightest setting if I wanted. to make it a bit more comfortable. Though technically, depending on your technique, you might actually want the aid of this spring to help lift the impression key up faster. And then that space operates from there. So the main thing in common between this index typewriter and these regular keyboard typewriters is your use of a single type element, as it's called. So your type element is a single detached piece that produces type, or that is characters, on the page. So you can see that, that this machine has what are called type slugs, individual ones for each, into each character that contains the laterally inverted letters that will then be pressed into a paper. While here, we have them all on the same moving part, whereby depending on which key you press, using a special mechanism, it will rotate that wheel only by a certain amount. And that will make a print. Same thing on this machine here, where you can see a wheel over there. This is a Bennett typewriter from 1915, I believe. This one's from 1913. So depending on... So again, here, with the central keys, it will only rotate a bit. And with the outermost keys, it will rotate more. Same thing with this Hammond here. And ideally, I'd have some paper. Just stick some tissue paper. <laughs> I'll feature this in a future video. Generally, you don't want to quote unquote dry fire a typewriter. 
or at least you don't want to be sticking ink onto this impression strip. As you can see, as you type this type shuttle here, which you can see the other side. In this case it has three rows for your shifts and figures. Will, by a special mechanism, move this type shuttle a certain way to choose which letter to imprint. And the same thing also goes for this IBM Selectric. Um, again, I'd ideally have some paper, <laughs> but I'll just sacrifice one character. Yeah, every single time you press a key on this more modern looking keyboard, the mechanism will index and rotate this ball to the correct position to select an appropriate character. Okay, now as for some remaining features of this machine. So if, as you approach the end of a line, so you're typing a your character, you'll hear the first bell. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That last bell tells you that the next character is the very last, after which the carriage will stop moving. Now, unfortunately, on this machine, the only way to um, conduct a, what's called margin release. So your margin release is when you reach the end of the page and you want to keep on typing. And you want to keep on typing. Don't want to drown out my voice with the loudness of this machine. So it's locked, press the margin release, then you can type again until the absolute end of the carriage. But on this machine, you have to stick your pinky right over here to that margin stop, push it up, and you're through. Now you can type as far as you want, but to go back, unfortunately you have to do the same thing. Like, or in this case, use your left pinky. <laughs> And you see margin release, and then in this case your carriage return, or your line feed rather, requires that you pinch in that fashion. And pull. So that's your carriage return. Now, another key feature of these machines is your ability to change your typeface. So, like on a split constrictor, you can easily remove this type cylinder and replace it with another one. And in this case, on this mignon, you would unscrew, let's see, carefully, you would carefully do so. Now this little rubber or something is rather worn, keeping it there. I don't even know its exact purpose. Maybe to add friction to prevent it from unscrewing over time. So you just remove that, like this. Then you have your typeface here, which is already a bit soiled from use. Pretty cool thing. There's a really cool one that I purchased and proxied. It's still on the way. Hopefully it doesn't get lost in the mail. That would be quite unfortunate, given the rarity of that particular type cylinder. Now. Let's then demonstrate how to change typefaces. So this here is called Plakatschrift, if I pronounce that correctly. Well, this is probably Schreibschrift <laughs> um, for script. So Plakat script basically means poster script because of the larger characters. And to use that, you need a larger index. And to get there, we need to first of all carefully remove this guy. Well, ideally, you have to, yep, you have to lift. 
stylus up first. And then lower in the new index. Like this. Um, this thing here is basically telling you the requirements for spacing in this typeface. Um, of course, I just stuck that through Google Translate. Those of you who are German can read that. Anyway, so you pretty much just rotate. So you would pretty much put it to the key position, I guess. And then locate the slot. Okay, yeah, it'll be on the inside. Slide that in carefully, like so. And now we can type. So let's say I want to state uh, hello. Now the interesting thing is that, oh goodness, I forgot. I have to press space once between each character. <laughs> um, okay. I'll leave that typo in. Then you have to do three between words. Now you can see you have this big text. So that's how you change the typeface on this machine. All right, so with all the features covered, I would like to show you, hopefully, what might be the first video of someone speed typing, speed typing, <laughs> at least compared to how fast you can type on these other machines, on a Minion Index typewriter. <laughs> that's fun. So in terms of technique, what I'm doing is I have my fingers here, like this, so that in addition to the spring force, or like sometimes it might actually get stuck like this, so to make sure that I can get a rapid cycling of this type head like this, um, I also use my thumb, and then if I want I can quickly move over here to press the spacebar. Now unfortunately with this machine, the backspace isn't 100% reliable, but we'll do for now. In terms of maximum speed, I found that Want to, if you actually want to repeat characters, the maximum would be around um, five characters per second, maybe even six. But for actual typing, like if you're doing like so, and you want to do it so accurately, you're limited to between four to five characters per second which is just a bit under the maximum speed of these machines together. Of course, that machine can type up to 12 characters per second, if not 14. Okay, so let's type now. Firstly, if you want to align with previous text, 
you can use these little edges here. So, machine, let's just type character. Oh, well, you also have that pointer over there. Oops, that's lined. Turn to a new line. Ellipsis. Oops.
my character turn. <laughs> see that took quite a while to type but compared to other index typewriters at the time or before this time like already 1925 is a very late time to be seeing an index typewriter which was generally more so early 1900s or late 1800s technology um, where technically the first HAL typewriter of 1881 did have a two-dimensional index, um, but the majority of index typewriters had your characters arranged in a long line, or a circle or a disc, or semicircle. You can Google that. Um, but, in fact, even other machines, they had a whole keyboard where you had to move a pointer to each of the keys to type. So that would, of course, be quite slow. Whereas now, you have with this machine a nice and efficient layout where you can quite quickly index between your different characters. And, of course, I made a bunch of mistakes this time around. I'll probably post a video once I get a lot better. But you can imagine how this machine would have been much more cost-effective for certain people at the time and was, of course, more performant and easier to use, hence its popularity and its survival. That is it for the Minion typewriter.